Protect your privacy online with the best VPN for gaming, ExpressVPN. And visit expressvpn.com slash gillymaster linked in the description to find out how you can get three months free. Hey everyone and welcome back to another GT Online Expanded Enhanced Guide. Now this is one I didn't think I was going to be making, but we actually did get a weaponized vehicle in the next gen version here. And naturally, I'm going to make a guide on it. So we have the weaponized Ignis here today. I'm going to be going over all of its stats from its weapon to its armor to its performance to ultimately help you make the decision of if it's worth to purchase it or not. Before we do start though, I want to give a big shout out to my friend JSM for helping me record and test for this video. So the weaponized Ignis is very expensive. It has a base price of $3.2 million, but as I said, that's just a base price because it's also an HSW vehicle, which is going to cost you another about a million dollars in upgrades if you want to fully max it out. Its armor is not really that good. It blows up in just one rocket, which is not very good for a weaponized vehicle today with the rocket and explosives meta. A land vehicle that can't take a hit just isn't that good. However, it does come with a lock-on jammer, so you won't have to worry about getting hit by a lock-on rocket, only a free aim missile or any other type of explosive like a sticky bomb, for example. It does have some resistance to bullets, though. It has the same style of bullet-resistant windows as every other armored car. They block 15 automatic weapon rounds, 7 shotgun shots, 15 pistol shots, 5 sniper bullets, or 2 revolver shots. And FMJ or minigun rounds can instantly break through the windows. Now let's get into the more interesting part of this vehicle, the gun. Thankfully, Rockstar didn't just give it the standard front-mounted, boring machine guns that you see on almost every other armored vehicle. This has a giant minigun on the top of the E-Fire, and fortunately, it's very powerful. I'm going to be comparing it to the weaponized Tampa since that is the closest resemblance to the weaponized Ignis gun. And in the damage department, with both weapons shooting the CEO Washington that you can spawn, they blow up the car at the exact same time, meaning that their damage is equal. Although, I guess technically, this would make the Ignis gun more powerful since it's only one minigun, while the Tampa has dual miniguns. The range of the Ignis minigun is also kind of insane, but it also matches the Tampa's dual miniguns with a max range of 500 meters, so this thing can freaking snipe people. However, there is a catch with the Ignis gun because it can only be fired at a certain angle. You'll only be able to shoot it at what is in front of you or at the sides at like a 30 degree angle and above you at about a 60 degree angle. It cannot fire all around you like the weaponized Tampa minigun. It's not like a rotating one, which very much limits its ability in combat. You can't just circle an enemy and keep firing. The front of the car has to be somewhat facing them. And what's really annoying about this is when you're driving, the camera will constantly try to recenter itself, so aiming it can be a pain in the ass with that resistance that you have to fight. And there's no way to turn off automatic vehicle camera recentering in third person, unfortunately. You can make this a bit better by using the first person camera though, and if you go into the camera settings and turn off first person auto center, as well as set first person vehicle hood to on, now you can fire without it trying to recenter itself, and this also allows you to shoot up at a much higher angle than the third person view does. I wish we did get an option for turning off third person camera auto center, but this is the best we can do at the moment. Now how does the weaponized Ignis perform? Well, this is an HSW vehicle, meaning its performance is kind of nuts. It also means that for comparison's sake, I'll be putting it up against two other HSW vehicles in a drag test to get a good idea of its acceleration and speed in one test. So in this test against the S95 and the Cyclone, it does come in third place, but rest assured its top speed is still really good. Every one of the HSW vehicles are going to be insane performance wise. And if you want some further testing on the vehicle's performance, I'll leave a link to Bruffy's video on the topic in the description. But for the sake of this video, I try to focus on the utility of the vehicle as a whole rather than just the performance. Despite it being weaponized, you can, of course, use it in races, and I think you used to be able to enter passive mode in this vehicle. I could have sworn on release day you could enter passive mode, but during the testing for this video, it just didn't let me, so they must have fixed it. All in all, I like that the weaponized Ignis isn't just another regular vehicle with slapped-on front-mounted machine guns, so they can call it weaponized. Part of the actual car was redone for the turret. However, for $3.2 million and then the price of upgrading it, I do wish it had a bit more explosive resistance, maybe similar to the Minetech vehicles, or maybe a little bit less than that. I think that would have been perfect in terms of balancing. But let me know what you guys think about the weaponized Ignis in the comments. Do you like the car, and do you also wish it had more armor to protect it from rockets? 
If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, feel free to leave a like as well as subscribe to my channel for more GT Online content. I want to give a huge shout out to all my channel members for your support. If you'd like to become a member for some exclusive perks, you can either use the join button or the link that's down in the description. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day.